A big thank you to Squarespace for sponsoring this week's video. Our website is an essential part of our creative endeavors, and I love that ours looks great and runs well without much effort, so we can focus on new projects that challenge us to keep growing. All right. Today, I have five tips on how to get out of a creative rut for you. And this is something that's actually so important to me because we've all been in that place where we just feel kind of stuck or down and or feeling like we have nothing to say, nothing to do, no way to feel inspired. And I think that having your go-to methods to feel like yourself again and feel like you can create again is so important. And especially for Lou and I, if we didn't have these tricks, it would be so much harder for us to create content on a regular basis. So I thought we would share some of our go-tos on how to get out of a creative rut. And I thought I would start with my first tip. Okay, so my first tip to how to get out of a creative rut is to start a project. And I know it seems kind of counterintuitive. It's like, how can I start a project? I'm exhausted. I have nothing to say. But weirdly, I find that when you give yourself specifics, actual constraints, actual goals, it can create space for you to have more fluidity, more creativity than you even realize that you had. Because sometimes it's a mental block that's stopping us from just getting started. But if you have something specific to do, um, and there are so many amazing creative challenges out there. So you could do something like Inktober, which I've done in the past, which is a 31 day drawing challenge. There's something called Nano Remo, I think it is. And that's a writing challenge every day. And whatever you're into, whether it's cooking or drawing, or um, playing an instrument, I'm sure that there is some sort of pre-organized challenge that you could join. And then this way you don't even have to think, you can just kind of hop onto somebody else's creative bandwagon, use the energy of that. Or of course, if there's been a long list of things that you've always wanted to start, like how to knit or something like that, you could go for it. And I thought that because right now I'm really excited, I'm about to start a project, I could kind of run you through how to start a project in a way that gets your creative juices flowing again. So the project that I want to start is to actually complete a sketchbook. I have started so many sketchbooks over the past few years and there's something to be said for giving yourself like just a sketchbook that can be a notebook, it can be doodles, it can be this and that. But there is something I feel like so special about just having one designated sketchbook for a project that you finish start to finish. You know, I started an Inktober sketchbook, but I never finished it. I made a travel journal and it was really special, but I never finished the book. And so now I really wanna do that. So um, there are a couple of things that I think help when starting out a project. One is to have a timeline. With a timeline, you now know what you're getting yourself into. So for me, the sketchbook, that's gonna be a big project. So I'm thinking four to six months, but I would say if you're really feeling down and out, make your project seven days, make it five days. Just get yourself a little glimpse of, okay, I can commit to this for a few days and see how it makes you feel rather than committing to something, I mean, four to six months, like the chance that I fall off the bandwagon on this one is so high. Um, No, I'm gonna do it, but but you know what I mean? So if if you're really in a rut, I would say keep it small, but for the case of this example project, mine's gonna be a bit bigger, four to six months. And then you wanna know what you have to do every day and you wanna keep that small. So for me, the goal is one page a day that'd be seven pages a week. But if it doesn't happen each day because life gets hectic, what I wanna do is build Sunday as a buffer. So Sunday we like to take off, do quiet things, maybe go on a hike, go swimming, but also just have like time to read, time away from screens, stuff like that. So Sunday seems to me like a built-in day in my routine that I could draw. And so this way, if I miss two days or something during the week, I can always build those pages back in so I don't have to feel like, Like if I miss a page, I should just quit. You wanna have this backup system that allows you to mess up and then get right back on it so that you can keep moving forward because it's not about perfection when it comes to creativity. You just wanna keep those juices flowing so that you feel inspired. 
My second tip is to look for transformation. So I know this might seem like a weird tip, look for transformation, like what does that even mean? And so for me, journaling is like really good for that. But I know Lou is much more visual, like he never journals, like it's not his thing. But for him, you know, lately he's been surfing a lot. And so I think for him, he, let's say he gets down, we are really busy for two weeks and he doesn't get out surfing. He can feel like not himself. You know, he hasn't gotten outside, he hasn't gotten to move his body. But if he thinks about it and it's like, wow, well actually the last time I went surfing, I caught this many more waves or I was able to read the ocean more. Hey, maybe if I just went surfing tomorrow, I would actually feel a lot better about myself. Or it's like, oh, like another thing that we've been working on, both of us, that I feel like has made us quite exhausted, but it's also very rewarding is training our puppy. And so because that is something that is such a day in day out thing and you don't totally see progress in one day that's when i think it can be really important if you take a second look at your photos roll on your camera see what's been going on so for us in the case of freya it's like she's grown up so much in the last two months yes we're really tired because we haven't been sleeping as well and you know it's been harder to get work done but it's been so amazing and it's like that transformation is actually really inspiring and it makes it way more rewarding than if you just can get stuck in a negative thought cycle where you're just like, oh my gosh, I missed, you know, doing X, Y, and Z. You know, we all miss doing a lot of stuff in times like this. It's better to just see if you can shift your mindset and focus on what's good. And for me, I like journaling, but for Lou, I feel like he just likes to get back out to doing whatever he's doing. So maybe he'll reflect in his mind like, hmm, not feeling so good. Maybe I need to go surfing again. And in that case, he gets back out in the water and you know, you see the transformation. Number three, best way to get out of a creative rut is to consume some inspiring content. And this is the thing, I know sometimes when I'm feeling so depleted, I'm like, I don't wanna make anything, I don't wanna start a project. I don't even feel like journaling, even though I know it would probably help me. I really just don't have it in me to do anything. But in those moments, I do have it in me to watch a good movie or to listen to a podcast um, or read a book. And so that's, I think, in that moment when you're feeling like down, I think the thing is, it's really important to actually pick content that will lift you up because it's so easy to get caught scrolling and feeling worse about yourself. But instead, what if you picked something that you knew would bring you inspiration? Like that, I feel like is such a powerful thing that you can do that takes almost no energy. So I think tonight I'm really excited because I have a new cookbook, which has been, that's another thing. So a new cookbook can inspire you so much. And I've really found that to be the case. We got this cookbook called The Korean Vegan, and we're gonna make something out of that tonight for dinner and then watch a movie from the Maui Film Festival. And it's like just taking some time to cook something different, watch something new, is a great way to feel inspired and to want to make stuff yourself. So that is my third tip, is to consume content that inspires you. Aren't they cute? My fourth tip for how to get out of a creative rut is to find like-minded people. Like-minded people are so important to the creative process, whether that's just finding friends and family members who are supportive of your creative pursuits, or even better, if you can find people who actually are passionate about the same thing that you are, because it's so inspiring and gives you so much energy to be able to just, you know, go out for a cup of tea or a cup of coffee with somebody who cares about the same thing as you, chat about it, the ups and the downs, the difficulties, what you're going through, um, or even better to go out and do that thing together. Um, right now, we have been very um, involved in the creative process of training a dog. And that means that for me, it's been really fun when we get to go out into the world with Freya to meet other people who are also interested in dog training because I can talk to them about it and it's such an easy way to hit it off. And yeah, I think that finding people 
in real life is amazing, but it's not the only way to do it. Like one of the things that actually is most inspiring out of like everything that we do every month is that we do a Zoom call with our Patreon community and just chat about life, about creativity, about what projects people are working on. And I always leave those conversations feeling so excited and energized to get back into creating things because you know, a lot of the people who find their way into our Patreon also really care about living creatively. So that can be another way to do it is to find your people online and who knows, maybe one day you can meet them in person, but till then you can support each other from all different corners of the globe. So that is one thing I'd really recommend. See if you can find people who are interested in learning whatever you're trying to learn. Um, it's a great way to make really quality friendships and it's done us really well over the past few years. Perfect. <laughs> Tip number five is get outside. Honestly, this is something that has saved me and Lou over the last few years. Whenever we're feeling like lost or confused about creativity or just life in general, Getting outside is like the best medicine for us. We can clear our head on a hike, go on a long walk and see just how beautiful nature really is. And it's just the perfect reset, like jumping in the ocean or, you know, we going into the freezing water in a cold plunge, um, anything really in nature, whether even that's gardening, like for us, watching this garden grow has been such a beautiful process and one that gets us outside, gets our hands dirty and in the soil. It's a massive learning experience. And all throughout our travels, like in the van and in the boat, being outside was the thing that brought us so much energy. And I think that it's easy to forget. We all get cooped up inside doing work and stuff like that. But if you can find time regularly in your schedule to get out there, get a hike in, who cares what the weather is, just get the right, you know, if it's freezing outside, get the right jacket. If it's pouring rain, the right jacket. I love, I don't know, maybe Lou can put the saying in German, but there's some sort of saying in German about how there's no bad weather, there's just bad preparation. And that's something that I really take to heart because no matter what the weather is outside, I mean, we're really fortunate here to have beautiful weather so often, but in general, it always makes you feel better, at least for me, to go outside and experience some fresh air, um, moving my body and just really paying attention to how gorgeous the natural world is because when you just look at like a plant and really take it in and don't rush by it, like our little spinach growing, like that's crazy. Watching those things happen has been such a shift in my mind because I never used to pay attention to it until we started living more outside, like in the van, and being way more connected to the natural tendencies of the world, the tides when you're in the boat, the wind when you're in the boat. And now living here, it's like we're off grid. So if it's raining, we're like, oh gosh, we're getting water. If it's sunny out, we have power. And those things have been really helpful for us to connect to nature. But even if you're just living in a normal house, you can still be super, super connected to the natural world. It's just about making it a priority. And um, even if it's not an everyday thing, even if it's a once in a while thing, or even if it's a thing when you're not feeling so good, you make time to get outside. I really think that it's the biggest boost in creative energy for me. But I hope that you enjoyed all these creative tips um, and that you, feel inspired to live a creative life in whatever way that means for you. We really, really want Live Creatively to be at the heart of this channel because it just is a message that means so much to both of us and has played such a cru crucial role in like our personal development over the past seven years of making YouTube videos. Um, and I wouldn't change it for the world. We really, yeah, creative creativity has truly changed my life. And I hope that it's a big part of yours as well. And if it's not, don't be intimidated. Even a little thing can spark something inside you that you didn't realize you had. A big thank you to Squarespace for sponsoring this week's video. 
One of my favorite parts about running our website using Squarespace is that the tools are so easy to use that we get to focus more on the design and look of the site. You can switch photos in and out instantly, change up the font for the entire site all at once, and just tweak and test it all out without having to worry about if it will work or not. If you'd like to start your own website or online store, head to squarespace.com slash wildlyroam for a free trial and 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Thanks so much for watching this video. We'll see you next Sunday.